I'm a nurse who works the night shift, and there have been two different occasions when I've been stalked on my way home. I'd like to share them with you. This happened when I lived in Chikawa, Tokyo. I was returning home on the last train of the night. It was around 12.30 a.m. or so. When you get off the train and exit the subway, there's a convenience store right at the top of the stairs. My apartment at the time was about seven minutes away from this store, in a residential area. At that time of night when you get off the last train home, the lights of the convenience store are pretty much the only light source in the area. The roads are usually empty as well. Back to the story. I was climbing up the subway stairs when I noticed a man waiting at the top of them, staring down at me. His eyes widened further and further as he stared at me. He was shifting around restlessly. At that moment, I knew something was weird about this guy. I ignored the traffic lights and crossed the road as soon as possible. I took a quick look over my shoulder and decided quickly to walk home since the situation was abnormally creepy. As I was walking though, I felt a looming presence behind me. I looked back over my shoulder once more and noticed that weird guy from the entrance of the subway was following me. He was closing the distance between us without any hesitation. I instinctively started running. I remember running like crazy. I was so panicked and frightened. There was no one on the streets to help me. Not a single car passing by, and it was so dark everywhere. I remember I ran up a path onto someone's private garden and pushed the gate aside. I hid in their yard as I crept around the back of the house. I peeked around the corner back at the road. I saw a taxi pass by, and I saw my chance. The taxi driver must have seen how scared I was, because they slowed down right away, and that really saved me that night. After that startling event, I moved into an apartment right in front of a different train station. This area was one that was much safer, as it had a 24-hour taxi and buses, and was well lit. It was also busy with many people, even during the nighttime. It was much more reassuring. I had been living in this new place for about two years, when something else happened to me. Of course, it took place when I was coming home from my night shift. Back in those days, when I left the hospital to go home, I used to take a shortcut through this dark alley. It was there that I was certain I met the same man once again. I remember quickly heading to the train station and boarding my train when I noticed the man once more. As I sat down, I could tell a man was staring at me. Some guy had followed me onto the train. I had a terrible feeling about this. This guy kept glancing at me and fidgeting around in his seat. The train pulled into my station. I got as close as I could to the doors, and as soon as they opened, I ran out as fast as I could. I sprinted to an exit I knew would be busy. I even took off my jacket and tried to blend into the crowd of people. When I thought I found a safe place to hide, I looked over my shoulder. Sure enough, he was right there behind me, desperately searching the area to find me. I knew how much danger I was in. Luckily, there was a police box at the west exit of the station. In the following days, I became paranoid that man might know where I lived or might wait to ambush me in a more well-hidden place next time. I told the police everything I could about the man. One of the officers seemed familiar with the man I was speaking of and described him as a real pervert. When he said that, shivers went down my spine. There are a lot of young nurses in Japan who work late like I did back then. It's been 10 years on now, and I still get creeped out thinking about those nights. As peaceful as Japan can be, you really have to be careful when walking home at night, especially if you're all alone. Four years ago, I rented an Airbnb to stay in for the holidays. 
I was seeing my family for the week of Christmas, so I got a place that was just a few miles away. When I arrived on December 20th, everything was exactly as I thought it would be. The place was a very regular house, in a very normal neighborhood. Overall, I was satisfied. I'd gotten there around 6 on that first day, though, and didn't feel like going out to see anyone, at least not until I'd gotten a good night's rest first. I stayed in and relaxed for the rest of the night, watching some TV and even getting a little bit of work done as well. I got in bed just before 10 p.m. and fell asleep quite quickly. In the middle of the night, though, I slowly woke up to a noise coming from downstairs. I was still half asleep and didn't even check the time. It sounded like small thumps against the wall coming from somewhere inside the house. As I listened to these noises, I didn't really feel worried or anything. Rather, it almost sounded like it was the house making those noises they tend to do at night sometimes. I only stayed awake for a minute or so before drifting into sleep once again. I don't recall waking up any other times during the night. By morning, I had forgotten and didn't even think about the noises I was hearing again. I was pretty sure it was just the unit creaking or something along those lines. Anyway, I let my family know I'd made it into town, and we got our plans set for dinner at their place. I relaxed at the Airbnb for the whole morning and afternoon until I was ready to head out. I grabbed my bag and keys and then walked up to the front door to exit the house. When I opened it, to my surprise, I found myself standing face to face with a man who was just waiting out on my porch. Needless to say, it completely caught me off guard, and I just stood there looking at him for a second, before even saying anything. Can I help you? I asked the man. He didn't knock or ring the doorbell or anything, which made me start wondering, how long could he have just been standing there for, and why was he here to begin with? The man did not respond to my question though. Instead, he nodded and walked away. I watched him go down to the sidewalk and just continue walking down the street until he was out of sight. I couldn't see any situation where this wouldn't be strange and creepy. Why was he at the Airbnb, and for how long had he just been waiting there outside without attempting to make contact? I made sure the place was locked up tight, then drove to my parents' house for dinner with the family. I brought up the situation as an interesting story, and everyone else seemed to think it was just as creepy as I did. Dinner was quite nice, and we had plenty of other great conversations, catching up on life and everything. That whole night, though, I couldn't stop thinking about that strange man, and if the things I'd left at the Airbnb were going to be stolen or something by the time I got back. I ended up leaving the dinner get-together at around 9, and getting back to the Airbnb about 15 minutes later. I parked in the driveway and walked up to the front door, looking around for any obvious signs of someone having been there while I was gone. I didn't see anything out of place. I unlocked the door and stepped in. I walked down to the end of the hallway and into the kitchen, dropping my keys and the bag on the counter. Then there was a sudden thump, just the same as the ones I'd heard the previous night. Now that I was downstairs, it was far louder and clearly coming from one side of the house. I slowly stepped into the room near where the sound was coming from, but then the thump came again from a door right next to me. I jumped back, getting a surge of adrenaline. After staring at the door for a few seconds, I could hear the faint sounds of heavy breathing coming from the other side. I grabbed my keys and ran for my car. I still didn't know exactly what was going on here, but I was not going to stick around to find out all on my own. I called 911 and waited for them to arrive. When they did, I watched them go in and search for a few minutes. Then they came out and told me something horrifying. The door this person was behind was the garage door, which showed signs of distress from the person likely trying to break the lock and get inside. Unbeknownst to me, there was a side door connected to the garage that led outside, which had been left unlocked by whoever had stayed there before me. 
I didn't ever plan to use the garage, so I'd never bother to check it. Whether the man I'd seen on the porch was the same person that was in the garage is unknown, but just knowing I was asleep while someone was right below me trying to break into the house is terrifying. What were they trying to achieve after breaking in? We have no way of knowing. Obviously, after that though, I went and stayed at a hotel for the rest of the week instead. I still find myself thinking about that situation, even four years later. I had to do a long drive across the US to get back home after visiting a friend of mine. I was 19, so naturally I was convinced I was invincible. I'm a woman and had pulled into a mountain town. It was about 11 p.m. or so and I was super tired. Although I was only three hours away from home now, I knew it wouldn't be safe to continue driving. For reference, I'm five foot two and I had plenty of cash on me at the time. I booked myself in for the night at the motel. It was really quiet, with only two vehicles in the parking area, one of them being a large white van. I know how that sounds, but I didn't really think anything of it. I mean, maybe it was the clerk's van, and he needed it for transporting things or something. The clerk was a man, and I immediately got a sketchy vibe from him. He seemed hell-bent on trying to creep me out for some reason. His idea of making conversation was to immediately say, A young girl like you ought to be careful. You know, these trees have witnessed many things around here. Pretty young things like you disappear all the time. I know that sounds like a horror movie, but believe me, that's what I felt like in the moment. I think he was prompted to say this because he asked where I was headed, and I was deliberately vague with him, just saying I was going somewhere important, but I needed to rest before I continued. The clerk kept pushing. Well, are you traveling alone? I said, yeah, it's just me. He then gave me this ominous warning. He was tall and skinny, and had ginger hair and really dark brown eyes. He reeked of cigarette smoke. In fact, the whole check-in area stank of it. He told me he would be at the desk if I needed any help. I was too tired to dwell on things any further. I went to my room and made sure my door was locked up and the windows were all covered. The room didn't smell too bad and nothing seemed that weird. That is, until I realized that none of the lights inside were working. I used my phone as a flashlight and went to the bed. There were cigarette butts all over it, and the pillows were also wrecked. I could see stab marks in them, and they looked filthy, just full of grime, as if they hadn't been washed in ages. I realized there were also cigarette butts inside the pillows where the stab holes were. I felt incredibly uneasy, but I told myself not to be ridiculous. I mean, that sort of thing happens at motels all the time, right? I couldn't ignore that uneasy feeling developing in my stomach, though. I pulled the covers back and at least the sheets were clean. I decided to sleep without anything over me. I lay there for about half an hour, but no matter how tired I was, I could not doze off. I was creeped out by every single noise from outside. I kept telling myself to chill out. It's just an unfamiliar environment, but I could leave right after a few hours of rest. Daylight would be here before I knew it anyway. I must have eventually dozed off at some point, but not for very long. I awoke with a start, my heart hammering in my chest. The door was being knocked on. I grabbed my phone to check the time and saw it was 1.15 a.m., I had not been sleeping for very long. Obviously, I felt uneasy. I mean, who the hell would be knocking on my door at this time? There were no people around, and I had the curtains drawn so I couldn't see outside. I was scared to look, yet I knew I had to. I got up very cautiously and gripped my phone, ready to use it as a weapon if need be. I moved the curtain aside, and I could see the outline of a tall man. I realized it was the clerk. Confused and still feeling on edge, I opened the door slightly. 
I was still shielding myself so he couldn't burst in. His face was blank, and he just stared at me. Hello? I looked down at his hand and realized he was holding a cup. It was one of those takeout coffee cups you get in cafes. It had a lid on it, and I couldn't tell what was inside. He held it out to me and said he knew I was tired from my trip. He thought he'd get me some caffeine to help me wake up. I was confused. I didn't answer due to my confusion. He gestured toward me again, and I finally just said, What? He looked at me and explained he got me coffee because I was so tired from my long drive, and he wanted to help me out. My uneasiness spiked to new levels. I felt a sense of dread creep over me. I told him that was nice of him and all, but I would be fine after a good night's rest. Thank you anyways. I went to shut the door, but he wedged his foot inside and insisted I take this drink from him. I'm not stupid. I don't care if it sounds paranoid. I know better than to accept a drink from a stranger, especially this guy, in these circumstances. Instead of insisting on declining though, I decided it would be best to accept it and not drink it. I took it from him, afraid he would grab my arm or something. Luckily for me, he didn't. He smiled a sinister smile at me and told me to take it easy before he walked away. As he did, I quickly shut the door and locked it behind him. I stood at the curtain, staring outside. I saw him go over to the white van in the parking lot and jump in the passenger side. I took the lid off the coffee, and only then did I realize it was not very hot at all. I wondered how long it had been sitting for. It did smell like coffee, but I also thought I might have smelled something else. I knew better than to risk taking a sip of it. I wasn't sure what to do. I was afraid to leave in case he ambushed me or followed me to my car. It wasn't that far away, but they could still come after me in his van if I drove out or run at me in the lot. What if he had other people waiting and watching me? What if he came back later? Surely he knew I'd locked the door, so even if he did drug me, he wouldn't be able to do anything. I mean, he could. Maybe he had a master key to all the rooms or something. Or he could smash the window and jump in. So many scenarios and questions were running through my head. And I was way too frightened to go to sleep. I felt like I was in a horror game. This was my safe room. I knew I had to get out of here and fast. By the grace of God, the bathroom windows were quite big. The motel rooms were on the ground floor, so I had an idea. I left the coffee on the floor of the main room and went into the bathroom. I looked in there before sleeping, but I hadn't paid close attention to the windows. I reckoned I could just about squeeze out of them. It was above the bathtub and not very high up. I knew I had to try. It would take me out behind the building. I opened it as wide as I could and hoisted myself upward. I managed to get out thanks to being short and thin. I landed hands and face first, but it didn't matter. At least I was out of the motel room undetected. I had my phone in my jeans pocket, so it was safe as well. Thankfully, it didn't get smashed or anything. I crouched down and crept slowly to the edge of the building. I could see into the parking lot. I knew the clerk still had to be in the van, but of course it was way too dark to really see anything. It was then that I thought about how he'd gotten into the passenger side, meaning someone else was behind the wheel. Had they been there when I arrived? Was this all a pre-planned thing? I had to take some deep breaths to calm myself down. I didn't have strong cell phone service. I could have tried calling the cops, but the signal was just so weak up in these mountains. It was even worse where I stood at the back of the motel area. I was scared the light from the phone would attract unwanted eyes to find me. I hid away behind the motel for a long time. I was too afraid to move. I knew I had to time this perfectly or something disastrous could occur. I had to abide my time. It was really bitterly cold outside and I was shivering, but I had to stand there and wait. I stood for a long time. I don't know how long until I heard a noise. I carefully peeked around the side of the building, where I saw the white van's thin doors open. The clerk got out with another man, who looked similar to him. They disappeared out of sight. I darted out of sight too, petrified. I felt incredibly vulnerable, and my heart was racing. 
I could hear movement, but I wasn't sure what they were doing. I heard footsteps approaching. Then I heard the clerk talking to the man. I'll knock. I then heard knocking on the motel door. I knew it had to be mine. I could barely breathe. I was so scared. Another voice then talked to him. I think it worked. This voice was higher than the clerk's, with an eerie calmness to it, as if they were talking about the weather. I knew in that moment the coffee had something in it. I heard the jingling of keys as someone fiddled with them. A sinking feeling came over me. I was right to think it was possible the clerk had some sort of master key that would open the door despite it being locked. If they went in and didn't see me there, would they check the bathroom? I hadn't shut the window behind me. It was still wide open, so they'd find me. I knew I had to act now and fast. I couldn't mess this up, or I was done for. They were clearly planning something very sinister. I heard the footsteps enter the motel room. I darted out, refusing to look back. I couldn't hear anything around me except my own heartbeat. I jumped into my car and sped out of the parking lot without daring to look behind me at any point. I was trembling, but I couldn't stop. I knew I had to drive no matter what. I didn't stop driving until I got home. When I finally arrived, I just sat in the living room. I was shaking until 5 a.m. My parents were still asleep. When they woke up, I told them everything that happened, and they called the police. I didn't sleep until like 11 that day, and I had to wake up at 1 p.m. The police took me seriously. They went to the motel that I described, but they didn't find any evidence of wrongdoing. The van was there, but there was nothing inside of it. The clerk was there, but he was apparently alone. There was no sign of another man, and the coffee was long gone. Apparently, my motel room only had a single sheet and nothing else inside. I begged the police to do something, because this guy clearly had a plan set up for me, but they told me there was nothing else they could do. It's been a few years since all this happened, and it put me off from motels for life. I don't like driving super long distances anymore either. I'd much rather stick to getting on a plane to take me wherever I need to go. I feel like the stars align for me in that night. In some ways, I'm lucky I'm short, even though I've always longed to be taller. I'm not sure a taller person would have fit through that window. I ignored my instincts a little, but at least I knew something was up, and I was on edge enough to be aware. I'm so glad I didn't drink that coffee. I feel lucky he didn't insist I drink it right in front of him or something. I really hope nothing like this happens to anyone else. This happened when I was in my early 20s. I was working in a retail store in a mall, but there weren't enough hours to go around. I asked if there was anything else I could do. My boss told me the location of another mall that needed more people, so I could go there on my weekends. I needed to take the bus route that was a bit longer, but I didn't have to make any transfers at least. I got up early and caught the earliest one I could. The bus ride was fairly normal. I got to see parts of my city that I hadn't seen before. I did notice the bus eventually went through a more dingy neighborhood. There was more trash everywhere, abandoned buildings and houses, abandoned cars as well. I noticed it, but I felt like I was safely on the bus, and my destination was in a nice neighborhood anyway. At some point, an older lady got on the bus, and I noticed that no one was getting up to offer her a seat. I gave her mine and went to go hold the pole next to the side door of the bus. I continued on my way. While riding, I remember looking at a guy next to me and asking if he knew about how much longer it would take to get to my stop. Before he answered, though, someone hit the buzzer to get off. The doors next to me opened, and then I felt hands on my free arm, grabbing me and pulling me. On reflex, I clenched up immediately, because I generally don't like any physical contact with strangers outside of a greeting or a handshake. I really think that reflex saved my life, because it took my brain a few seconds to register that someone was trying to pull me off the bus right now. 
A tall man in a white tank top, blue jeans, and white tennis shoes had come out of the back of the bus and grabbed my arm and was trying to drag me off right now. He'd pulled me down to the second step before I even knew what was going on. I was just barely hanging onto the pole. The arm he was grabbing had my purse on it, so I actually tried to shake my purse down to him so he'd let go. He had no interest, though. I had just about started calling for help when I felt someone grab my waist and pull me back up towards the bus. The man trying to pull me down must have realized he could no longer get me out without dragging this on longer than he'd expected. So he finally gave up and ran off. That was it. The guy ran off, the door shut once again, and I vaguely remember hearing the man who saved me say something along the lines of, You might die if you get off in that neighborhood. I had apparently gone into some sort of shock, because I only remember saying, Oh. I don't even remember thanking him. I didn't say anything to the driver. I didn't contact the police like I should have. I don't even remember my shift at the other location. I don't remember the ride home either. It's like I just went numb. When I was back at home and had completely showered and gotten ready for bed in my nightgown, I sat on the edge of my bed and thought about what happened. Did I almost get kidnapped in front of a bus full of people? I had a lot of regrets about this. I regret not contacting the police in case the guy went after another woman. At least then a woman would be aware he was out there. I regret not thanking and keeping contact with that nice person who saved me. I actually posted an article in my local Craigslist in hopes of him somehow hearing it and knowing how grateful I am. I was about 15 minutes from finishing the night shift at work when there was a massive crash in one of the windows in the office. I got up to go check it out, only to see that someone had thrown quite a sizable rock through one of the windows on the front of the building. This was especially weird because I was working in the industrial district at 11.30 at night with none of the other businesses opened. I went back to my desk and put a quick call through to security to let them know what happened. At that point, I decided it would be best to head home. As I was leaving the building, I was freaking myself out about it more and more. I ended up running to my car and getting in and taking off as fast as I could. I was almost home and I'd started to calm down a bit when I realized I did not unlock my car when I got in. It had been unlocked the whole time. I did a quick check with my hand in the back seat, but there was nothing there. Fast forward 30 minutes. I called a friend of mine who said he was out drinking at a bar nearby. I decided I was going to go join him. I jumped on my bicycle and started riding over. I was riding along the road on my bike. It was quite a nice night and I was in no big rush. I was just enjoying the moonlight when I began to hear someone riding right behind me. I straightened up and stuck to one side of the road. This guy passed me by really slowly, and when he was right beside me, he shot me a big smile that I can only describe as purely insane. I kind of flinched, and I was taken aback. I realized he was riding on my mom's bike. Needless to say, I turned around and went home. When I got there, sure enough, her bike was missing, and one of my car doors was open. This person must have somehow been hiding behind me the entire drive home. I remember it was about 9pm, and the kids' parents would be getting home in about an hour. I had put the kids to bed, and I was downstairs watching TV by myself. Every so often, though, the TV would flicker with static. To be honest, it was kind of starting to scare me. It wasn't until the point when I looked up from the TV and out of the nearby window when I lost it. There wasn't actually anything outside, but it seemed as if in the reflection, I could see what looked to be a tall man standing not too far away from me behind the couch. 
Needless to say, there was not actually anything there. When I snapped my head to look at the spot where it had been standing in the reflection, I didn't find anything. I grabbed all my stuff and wanted to get out of that house then and there. Instead, I ran upstairs and actually sat down quietly where the kids were sleeping until the parents arrived back home. I particularly remember when the parents arrived and I had started to leave. I was pulling out of their driveway in my old Ford when I looked up into the kids' bedroom window. I saw the same reflection I'd seen earlier looking back down at me with a hand raised as if waving goodbye. After that incident, I never babysat anyone ever again. I worked at a women's clothing mail-order catalog call center. During training, a veteran worker was talking about getting to know the frequent callers and the story of one of them. This old lady used to call in often. She was blind but would have someone help her pick things out. The manager of her apartment complex, I think. She would order often and they got to know her by name. Eventually, she stopped calling in, so they contacted the number they had for her, which was the apartment manager's number. The old lady was perfectly fine, but she had moved to a new building. Even though she was blind, she was very meticulous with her cleaning. She cleaned everything often. The manager had come in to do some maintenance for the first time in many months, and noticed that in every room of her apartment, just above her head level, there were thick webs and nests of black widow spiders, hundreds of them. Can you imagine an oblivious old lady walking around blind in a house she thinks she's made spotless, but there's a soul-freezing nightmare swarming all over the ceiling? Needless to say, they had to get her out of there before she ended up getting bit by one of them or something. Thankfully, the old lady is still alright to this day. I'm 22 now, but this happened when I was 16. At the time, I lived in Staten Island, New York. For a little background, I'm a woman, and at the time, I was 120 pounds soaking wet, with a height of 5 foot 6. I thought I was invincible. I never imagined anything like this would have ever happened to me. It was March 17th of 2013, around 10.30 p.m. or so, I was leaving my boyfriend's house. He'd walk me to the local bus stop as he always did. We joked and laughed while we waited for my bus to show up. It was kind of late. There weren't many cars on the street. I happened to notice a black SUV parked right across the road. I didn't think too much of it at the moment. My bus eventually did show up and I said goodbye to my boyfriend. I boarded and took a seat next to the bus driver. The bus was completely empty. The driver turned to me once we hit the first red light, and then he asked, What are you doing out this late? It was random and a bit creepy. Oh, I was just hanging out with my boyfriend. We made small talk and my initial apprehension was put at ease. The driver then told me it wasn't exactly safe to be out and about at this hour, and that I should be more careful. I nodded, but as I said before, I was an arrogant 16-year-old who thought she was invincible. As my stop approached, I looked down at my phone. It read 11.30 p.m. My battery was down to 5%. Wow, that's not great, I thought to myself. I exited the bus and said goodbye to the driver. He told me to stay safe, and I gave him another nod as the door folded back shut. For some reason, I just stood there and watched the bus make its way down the street until its taillights were well out of sight. As I stood there at the empty bus stop, a sensation of what I can only describe as impending doom washed over me. I made my way to the bench to sit down. The bus I needed to go to that dropped me off near my house was scheduled to arrive at 11.40, only 10 minutes left. As I sat there staring off into space, 
thinking about some things I had to do when I got home. A black SUV pulled right up to the bus stop. The uneasy feeling I had earlier intensified, but I did my best to play it cool. The man rolled down his window and called out to me, Hey, excuse me, do you know what time the bus is supposed to be here? He appeared to be a mix between Hispanic and Asian and had a medium build. At this point in time, I did not make the connection that this may be the same vehicle I saw just before I boarded the first bus. I figured he was probably waiting for somebody, so I replied that it would not be long. He then asked me how long I'd been waiting. It was then that I started to get a little bit freaked out. This guy was really giving me the creeps. I considered if I might just be overreacting. Perhaps he was just trying to pass the time. Still, I kept my guard up. I answered that I hadn't been there waiting long. He proceeded to try and make more small talk. I was trying to be polite, but I also kept looking at my pitch black phone screen, trying to subtly hint to him that I was not interested in conversation. It was dark out by this point. The only luminescence was coming from some nearby streetlights. However, there were also two big trees outside the bus stop, positioned in such a way that they blocked out most of the light. If this guy tried anything, the dark would have provided decent cover. I nervously clenched my phone, with the uncomfortable feeling inside increasing with every passing second. He told me he was new to the area and didn't know his way around too well. He claimed that he was in the army and was stationed nearby. He then asked me where the beach was. It's just down the street. I told him in a very matter-of-fact way, as to convey that maybe he should go there instead of talking to me. It was then that our eyes met, and I could see his face very clearly. His eyes were not like a normal human's eyes. It was as if they were looking right through me, staring at me like a hungry fox who just discovered a trapped and defenseless rabbit. He then asked me, Would you mind showing me around a bit? Come on, get in the car for a little while. I may have been a naive 16-year-old, but I was not an idiot. I knew that if I got in that car, that would be the last time anyone ever heard from me again. I was trying my best to show him that I wasn't afraid, so I politely declined while looking down the street for my bus. He then began to beg and plead. It was kind of pathetic, honestly. I told him no once again. He then said something that I'll never forget. Come on, baby. It won't take long. At that moment, my blood ran cold. My stomach felt like it was going to drop right out my ass. I felt absolutely sick, like I was going to throw up. Thankfully, at that moment, my bus was appearing in sight and coming down the street. A feeling of relief washed over me. I told him no, once again thinking that would be the end of it. He then told me he would drive me right home afterward. This guy would just not give up. I finally had enough. With all my strength and courage in me, I shouted at him to leave me the hell alone and called him a fucking loser. As my bus pulled up, I heard him say something genuinely terrifying, and I quote, Fine, bitch. I'll just follow you and see where you live. My heart started to race. My hands broke out in a cold sweat and my body began to tremble with fear. I quickly got on the bus. Honestly, I don't know why I didn't tell the bus driver. I think I was just in a state of shock. I was hoping that Mr. Moishbade Hunter in the SUV didn't mean what he'd said, and he was just pissed off and trying to scare me. When I sat down and looked out the window, though, I saw the headlights of the SUV tailing the bus. I thought I was going to have a mental breakdown, when the bus finally arrived at my stop, I ran like hell. I reached the front door of my house, which was usually unlocked. Tonight of all nights, though, it was locked from top to bottom. I frantically rang the doorbell while going through my back to find my keys. I heard someone pull up out front. Without turning around, I knew who it was. Just like in the movies, I dropped the keys I was trying to put into the front door. I finally managed to unlock the front door. Before turning the handle, I heard a car door slam shut from behind me. 
I quickly ran inside and slammed the door shut in a panic. I explained to my mother and my older brother what happened. My brother ran outside and looked up and down the street. I was shaking, absolutely consumed by terror. My emotions finally got the best of me, and I could no longer hold back my tears. We called the police, and they came and searched the area. They asked me if I'd gotten a tag number. Unfortunately, I had to tell the officers that it was too dark to see. I did notice a sticker of some sort of bird on the backseat driver's window. It didn't dawn on me until right then that that had been the same SUV that was parked across the street when I was with my boyfriend nearly an hour prior. They told me they checked the army base nearby and the surrounding area, but nobody had seen any vehicle matching the description I gave. All I could think about was what the bus driver had said to me and the irony of what took place on the same night. Years went by, and I didn't think much about that incident after that night. One day, I was scrolling through Facebook when I came across a picture. My friend had posted it. It was a story of a man who had been following her home from work for the past three days. It was the same guy I had encountered five years prior. My heart felt like it was going to leap out of my throat looking at that post. I noticed that several other women had come forward and they all shared similar experiences to mine. I ended up finding out that he almost kidnapped a 13-year-old girl. She allowed herself to be lured into his car, but once inside, she noticed a roll of duct tape, some rope, a pair of gloves, and a bottle of what turned out to be chloroform on the floorboard. She ended up jumping out the window while they were stopped at a red light. I don't know all the details, but apparently he also got physical with a woman who was pregnant and tried to force her into his car. He got pretty ballsy and started trying to abduct a woman in broad daylight. The news found out his name was Leo, and it was discovered he had a wife and two daughters who were around three and five. They interviewed his neighbors, and to my surprise they defended him, saying that all these women were just lying. It's truly unbelievable how stupid and useless people are. Five separate accounts from five different people who have no connection with each other came forward and shared their experiences. Could you please dislodge your head from your ass and face up to the facts? Anyway, to this day, I have no idea whatsoever became of him. The last I heard, he was still at large. I hope they caught him so no other young woman had to be subjected to this monster ever again.